Hey, have you ever wished you could just turn any old picture into a realistic material in Keyshot? Well, today's video, I've got a hack for you. And I'll admit it's definitely a hack since it's not the most technically correct way to make physically based materials. This is more of a quick and dirty approach to good enough results. So today I'll show you my system for turning pretty much any old photo into a decent looking material in Keyshot. All right, here we are in Keyshot in the material practice scene, which you can grab for free from the file vault if you wanna follow along. I wanna jump into camera number two. This on the left is the blank slate that we're going to use to create our new material on. So I'll double click on it so we can edit that material. And I wanna open the material graph since this is where most of our work is going to happen. On the right side, we see a root node and on the left, we see a material node. We know it's a material node because it's plugged into the surface socket of the root node double click the diffuse node and change it to a plastic type of material. We are going to use a plastic for the base because it has all the properties we need to create a convincing looking wood material. I wanna change the diffuse color to black. Next, I wanna bring our texture in that we'll be using for our material. And I wanna grab the white dot on the right side of this. This is an outbound socket. And I wanna plug it into the white dot next to the word diffuse. Now, instead of a solid black color, we have the color being driven by this image texture. Next, I'll double click the texture node to make sure it's mapped correctly. We'll use box mapping, that's fine, but I wanna change it from center on model to center on part. This will align the middle of the texture with the middle of our part. I also wanna rotate it, so I'll go to angle UV and I'll type in 90, which will just rotate it around the center. Now to modify the way this texture looks, I wanna use a utility node. So I'll click on the connector here and right click, go to utilities and color adjust. This gives me another node that will change the color of this texture as it is applied to the plastic. So the main thing I wanna do here is darken it up a little bit. And I also want to add some color. It's a little too bland for me. So I'll go ahead and click on the colorize option and I'll go for like a nice brown kind of like a rich brown color. Now, the first thing you might notice is we have a bright, sharp reflection running right across this. This tells us that the surface of this is perfectly glossy smooth. We need to fix that. Before we do that, I wanna click on the connector going into the diffuse channel, right click and disable. This is going to go back to a glossy black. Next, I wanna connect another outbound socket from that texture to the specular channel. Basically what we're doing is we're using this texture to control how much light gets reflected off of this surface. So we're going to insert another node between the texture and the specular channel. And this one is called a color to number. We're gonna spend a lot of time using this. So I'm gonna slow down and explain how it works. First of all, click on this node, make sure it's got an orange band around it and hit C on the keyboard. This gives us a color preview and will be a lot easier to see what we're doing. So the way this node works is we are taking the color of the image texture and we're converting it to a numerical value, which is represented in grayscale. We have zero representing black and one representing white. Now we may not have pure black or pure white on this texture, but we can remap these values as we need to using this node. Our input from and to represent the darkest and the brightest values of this texture. Darkest is a zero and the brightest values are a one and the output from and to represent the darkest and brightest values of this texture that are going to be passed on to this plastic and therefore will control the specular value. Now, if I don't make any changes to these values, the blacker or darker areas will reflect less light than the whiter areas will. So if I get out of this preview, we will see that there's darker areas that are not reflecting as much light and there's brighter areas that are reflecting more light. All the while, the surface is still perfectly glossy smooth. So this is not roughness, we'll get to that in a bit. Back in our color to number, we wanna make these darker areas lighter and maybe lighten up the whole thing overall. If we take the output from, which is at zero, we'll take those black values and we'll make them lighter. And if we take the output to and start to increase it, we'll make the overall brightness of this even lighter, closer to white. So I've gone ahead and increased the brightness of this texture to the point of where we barely can see a difference between them, but it's a very light grayscale image texture. When I get out of that preview, we still see what looks like the wood texture, but in fact, this is just the amount of light being reflected off of this surface. 
Now, before we continue, if you're enjoying what you're learning here, then you'll love my upcoming Material Masterclass course. I'm gonna share everything I know about creating materials in Keyshot. It's going to be epic. Now, before we move on, I wanna disable the specular connector and we'll grab another outbound socket and plug this one into roughness. But wait, we don't see a roughness. Well, if you let go of the connector right on the plastic node, it will give you the option for every possibility and we'll choose roughness. And at this point, we're going to use, yep, you guessed it, another color to number. Now, if we preview that color to number, once again, we're taking these values from the texture and converting them into numbers. The way roughness works is it sees light colors of a texture like white as being a high roughness because white is represented by the value one. Black is represented by the value zero. So the darker values here are equal to zero in this case. If the roughness is zero, it's completely glossy. Now in this example, we have these darker grains of our wood, which are a little bit recessed. And if we were to look at the reference photo of this wood material, we would see that those darker areas here are actually a little bit less reflective and less shiny. So we don't want as much light being bounced out of those dark recesses. So the way we'll do that here using the roughness is we want to make these darker areas white and these whiter areas dark. So we can essentially invert this using our color to number. We'll type in one for the output from and zero for the output to. By swapping those values, we essentially invert this texture. Now these darkest areas here are going to represent the lighter, more raised areas. I can go ahead and tweak this image until we get something that looks a little bit more like what I need. All right, so the areas that used to be the dark wood grain are now showing as a light gray, and the more raised surfaces that are supposed to be smoother are showing as a black. If I get out of this color to number preview, we should see that we have smooth, glossy areas, and where the wood grain is recessed, we see these kind of more rough, less reflective areas here. So we can play with these values until we're happy with the results. Obviously, we don't want it to be super smooth, so we're gonna take that output too and start to increase it a teeny bit as well. So at this point, what I'm going for is something that almost looks like a wood grain, even though we don't have the image texture showing us the color of it yet. This is basically taking us from a mirror-like finish to one that's a little more realistic with some roughness in areas that are more rough where the wood grain has these little cracks in it and is a little more smooth on the other raised areas because this is a table that has a polyurethane coating on it. Now, before we jump into the bump texture, I'm going to disable this connector as well. And last but not least, we're going to connect our texture into the bump channel. And the reason I saved bump for last is because people tend to rely too much on the bump texture and not enough on these other channels. By default, you can see this is way too strong. If I double click on my texture, I can reduce the bump height. If I do a negative value, it will invert the bump pushing in the opposite direction. In this case, we wanna leave it a positive number. But again, one is too strong. So let's try 0.1 and see how that looks. While this looks a lot better, it's still way too strong. I'm gonna go down to 0.05. And the strength of your bump height will depend on the scale of your texture. Bigger textures, you can use a smaller value. Really small textures, you'll have to go much higher. In this case, it's still too strong. I think I'm gonna try 0.02. And what I'm looking for is to try to avoid areas that are getting too bright white, and these cracks shouldn't look quite so deep to my eyes. I'm gonna go all the way down to 0.01, and I think that's going to work out pretty well. So there's our bump texture. Now the fun part is we get to enable all of our properties again. Let's try bringing back our roughness and see how that looks with the bump. There, we get a little more depth, you see. Next, we're gonna go to our specular and enable that, and that should control a little bit more of the light that gets reflected out of this. And lastly, we're gonna bring back our diffuse, and that should bring our color texture back in. And just like that, we've gone through a pretty simple process using a few of the same nodes to get one texture to create a fairly detailed material and one that's pretty realistic. So of course, at this point, now that we have all of our properties being driven by this texture, we can go back in and make any sort of adjustments or modifications that we need to, to make this look the way we want it to. 
Now, if you wanted this material to cover a larger area in KeyShot without repeating, that would require taking the texture into Photoshop and doing further editing. If you're interested in that, let me know. I can cover it in another tutorial. Not every texture can easily be turned into a seamless one, but the process isn't that complicated. So let me know. That said, until next time, happy rendering.